Welcome to In The Workshop. What happens when pipe threads are mixed in the same installation? This is the new injector and the old piping and this very strange egg-shaped thing which is a secondary clack valve or check valve and it's fitted between the injector and the main check valve on the boiler. All it is is a simple ball valve. I've tried removing the ball which does improve the injector's performance a little bit but not much because of the layout of this egg-shaped thing. It's a bit like a globe valve so the holes are drilled at an offset. So suddenly the water leaves the injector but it can't form into a column of water because it has to go around this very sharp bend. And this makes the injector more difficult to operate. I think it has to go, as does some of the other piping. This one is particularly badly bent because it's the only really rigid piece of piping that supports the weight of the injector and this strange check valve. What I'm doing here is checking the threads, because they are not all the same. For instance, this union nut to my left hand normally connects to the water valve, and it seems to fit on this auxiliary check valve, although for some reason it does seem a bit loose. The first part of the job I'm going to tackle is this short stubby piece of pipe. Now I've chopped it in half using the bandsaw. I'm going to duplicate this using a slightly thicker walled piece of copper pipe, which I will have to turn down at each end. To fit into the unions, and the entire assembly needs to be two inches long. On the piece of pipe that's left on the engine that feeds the check valve on the boiler, there's a union nut, and I need a thread that's going to suit it. All I need to do is find a male thread that screws into the union nut off the part that I've just chopped in half. Initially I couldn't find one, so I thought it might be a good idea to make one, and here I'm looking through my box of very old, very large taps and dies. These are mainly BSP taps and dies, but I couldn't find one the right size. BSP threads are really strange. BSP stands for British Standard Pipe. This union nut is just under 5 eighths of an inch in diameter, but because the thread is BSP, it gets very, very confusing. Try typing BSP threads into Google and you'll see all the charts showing what sizes they really are. Finally, I found a thread in my box of old pipe fittings that fitted the union nut. All I needed to do with this fitting to make it go on the outlet pipe of the injector was to first of all remove the washer, then I cleaned up the head using my one inch belt sander. And once I'd done that and drilled the hole a bit larger to take an adapter, this is what it looked like. In this clip you can see the new threaded hexagon nut at the left hand side, the strange inline check valve in the middle, and the pipe that goes to the injector's outlet on the right hand side. I'm going to replace the injector's outlet pipe with a much longer one, and here I'm taking a measurement to give me the length of pipe that I need to make to go from the injector outlet to the union nut, which is still on the end of the long pipe that feeds the check valve on the boiler. The original hole in the hexagon part of this fitting was a bit too big, so I drilled it out and made an adapter, and the entire thing will be silver soldered to the end of the outlet pipe from the injector, which I haven't made yet. Now it's piping time. I've found a suitable piece of pipe, 3 eighths of an inch in diameter, and all I need to do is bend this to match the right angle bend on the original piece of pipe. But unfortunately this piece of pipe was far too thick and wouldn't bend. Just what I need for the short water inlet pipe. Here's a comparison between the old and the new. I didn't forget to put the union nuts on, by the way, as you can see. I can fit this part to the injector, then at least I know where it is. This outer nut is bigger than the one that connects to the injector, and it's a different thread form. I found another piece of 3 eighths of an inch diameter pipe that was the right wall thickness, and that bent OK using the bender. Flush with success, I silver soldered a union onto one end of it, and as you can see, it fits the injector perfectly. As you can see in this clip, I also silver soldered the other end on. That wasn't difficult, this entire job is very straightforward and simple. The only minor problem is that the thread on the other end is the wrong thread. Even though I checked it with the union nut, the union nut that I used was one that fits onto the water tap not onto the existing fitting on the pipe. Annoyingly, the thread is the correct pitch, but it's ever so slightly larger, and the union nut just would not go on it. So, it's back to the drawing board. I unsilver soldered the original fitting, and here I've found a suitable fitting that is the right size. 
and this clip shows me silver soldering this fitting to the end of the pipe. My brazing hearth is a very homemade affair and it's really two layers of vermiculite blocks on top of some heat resistant material on top of a metal table. These large vermiculite blocks are really useful because I can do this. I can put enough pressure on the fitting using the blocks to hold it upright so I can silver solder it. With the amount of silver solder that I normally apply, which is always too much, gravity plays an important part. Having said that, I'm not really bothered about applying too much silver solder on this job because it's a very highly stressed component, sitting between the injector and the long heavy pipe that feeds the boiler. Please don't write in, I know I've applied the silver solder early, I always do this in the tutorials, this is just so you can get an idea of just how much heat you do need not only to melt the silver solder, but to make it flash around the joint. The flux I'm using as always is Easy Flow number 2, which is fine for brass and copper components. If instead of copper and brass I was silver soldering steel, I would use some stuff called Tenacity Flux, and as the name suggests, it's a much more tenacious flux. Once I've finished the silver solder job, I let the part cool to black, quenched it and cleaned it up. This clip shows the new injector complete with its new piping arrangement once I'd refitted it to the traction engine. I think you will agree it looks a good bit better. Here's a shot of the new injector fitted to the original piping, which was not so good really. And now, after a quick look at the new installation, yes, it's definitely much better. And well worth the effort, I think. That's it for this episode. I'd just like to say, as always, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.